For some background, I never knew my sister was adopted growing up. Sometimes we felt my grandma slightly favored me, but no one ever thought she mistreated sis. I lost my job last year. Since grandma was high risk and needed someone to help her run errands, we agreed that I would temporarily move in and take care of her while I got back on my feet. While staying with grandma, she started telling me some family secrets. One day we were casually talking about some trinkets of hers I liked, and she said she would leave them to me. Then suddenly she told me only I would be in her will and not my sister because she was adopted and not our blood relative. I was so shocked by the info. I just told her it's up to her since it's her money and I have no right to tell her what to do even if I did feel bad for sis. My mom admitted sis was adopted and begged me to keep it a secret. I didn't tell my mom about grandma's will since I didn't even know if that was even confirmed and thought it would cause more drama. After talking to mom, I decided to just keep my mouth shut and see what happens. Grandma unfortunately passed a few months ago, and her will was exactly like she told me. Sis got a few symbolic items, but money-wise, she basically got nothing. I got quite a sum, since my dad had no sibling, and he passed away years ago. I was even considering giving Sis some money since I felt terrible. Still, before I could even make a plan, Sis already blew up at me. She accused me of somehow brainwashing grandma into giving me everything while I was living with her. That made me so mad, so I just told her to buzz off and didn't give her a dime. Then for the next few weeks, I saw her post passive aggressively on social media about what a snake I was. When people, including our mutual friends, asked in the comments, she would say, let me PM you, so I can only imagine what she told them about me. Finally, last week she contacted me again telling me to admit I did something to grandma. She then told me she had found herself a lawyer and she was going to sue me for manipulating grandma over the will before her death. At this point, I was sick of it, so I just screamed at her that grandma told me she wasn't in the will because she was adopted so she can buzz off with all that nonsense. Then I blocked her everywhere. Finally, she apparently confronted my mom and mom called to curse me out for telling sis she was adopted. They also now think that since I knew about grandma's plan and didn't say anything, it counted as some sort of manipulation. I'm so tired of this drama. At least please tell me if I was the idiot. Your sister got screwed over and her world turned upside down and you're surprised she's lashing out at those who lied to her for so long after being told she isn't real family and cut out of the will? Why wouldn't she think she's being lied to now? Your family is the idiot and that includes you. In every way that mattered, this girl was and is your sister. To find out that she was not only adopted, but not considered real family in this way must be indescribably horrible. You could have warned your mom. You could have asked your lawyer to split the money and not tell her. You could have asked your grandma to reconsider. You could have told your sister that you hated grandma's decision and would split the money because you love her. There were so many things that you could have done, but you wanted the trinkets and you wanted the money. I agree that you didn't brainwash grandma, but you did allow this hateful thing to happen without doing a blind thing to stop it. So you are the idiot. Why would OP want to split the money with their sister who started spreading horrible lies about them? Maybe if she spoke to OP about the money without accusations, they would have come to an agreement about a split. But she didn't. The sister threw a tantrum and blamed OP instead of their grandma. OP is not the idiot here. Everyone's the idiot here, really. Secrets stink, but you were willing to keep this one until it stopped benefiting you, and then you broke it open in anger. Your mom is the idiot because, again, secrets stink. Your sister is the idiot for repeatedly taking the drama to social media and for accusing you of manipulating your grandma, who was already going to be an idiot without your help. The first place for idiot goes to grandma, who didn't think adopted children are a real part of the family. Yeah, she can do what she wants with her money. Still a raging idiot. I, 43 male, and my wife, 45, have three kids. Female tween, younger female, and 19 male. We recently downgraded to a three-room apartment because finances are tight. My wife and I share a room, so that leaves two rooms for our kids. I decided that my daughters would share a room while my son would have his own room because my son is the eldest by quite a bit. My tween daughter has been complaining about how she hates sharing a room with her sister 
because her sister likes to annoy her. I told my daughter that I understand and I would talk to my other daughter about it. So I did, but it didn't work because my oldest daughter is still complaining. I told her that there's nothing I can do apart from having constant talks with my other daughter. Then she said there was something I could do. I could make my younger daughter share a room with my son. I told my daughter she would have to suck it up and tolerate her sister. She accused me of showing favoritism and allowing my son to have his own room while she had to deal with her sister. I said that my son is an adult. My sister said that just because she's a teen doesn't mean she doesn't have feelings. My wife is supporting me on this, but I can't help but wonder if I'm really showing bias. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Is putting the youngest daughter and the 19-year-old together an outlandish idea? Definitely. But that's no excuse to tell your daughter to suck it up when she has a problem. Her sister is stealing things and disturbing her doing homework. You can do a whole lot more than just nicely ask if she'll stop. Going from your own room to a shared room stinks, especially for the older sibling. But you as a parent can put in steps so that it stinks a little less. Really, you went about this in the least helpful way possible. If there's anything she learned from this, it's that you can't be bothered to help her when she has a problem. Not the idiot, but I do have a suggestion. I had to share a room years ago with my younger cousin. It was terrible and I hated her. Until our grandmother put masking tape down the center of the room, dividing it in half. We each had to stay on our side. She also put a sign on the fridge that said, It's been X days of no fighting. If we made it to seven days, we get McDonald's fries. Or we could defer our prize and make it 14 days to get a lunch at McDonald's. The tape and the reward worked really well, but it took a minute. Fast forward to adulthood, we are great friends. And as a fun joke, we get lunch at McDonald's every few months in honor of our Nana. My brother is getting married in a few months. Important to note that my girlfriend does not like him or his fiance at all. My girlfriend messages me, letting me know she's found a dress she's swooning over for the wedding, but it's a statement dress, pure white, floor length, and she asked me to tell her my honest opinion. I told her that I'm not crazy about the dress because of the white part. She says, I hope you wouldn't mind if I bought it and tell her she absolutely can. I would just prefer that she doesn't wear it to the wedding. I have never once asked her if she could wear a different outfit. This was the first time. We ended up arguing over it. She says it's high fashion and she just loves the dress. I told her that I have absolutely no doubt she would look stunning in it. However, I just strongly feel that it's not appropriate to wear at a wedding. I don't think it's appropriate to wear something so bold at someone else's wedding, especially my brother's. Also, half of the dress is just plain white cloth, which is hugely disrespectful to wear at someone else's wedding. Now, I am the last person on planet Earth to know anything about fashion and wedding or evening wear. I just need advice as to whether or not I was being an idiot about this and if the dress actually would be appropriate to wear. That dress is a calculated and effective insult. Look at me, I'm high fashion and white. If she hates them enough to wear such a dress, she'd better not attend at all. She is obviously trying to outdo the bride in her day. I'd also strongly reconsider my relationship with someone as petty as this. Not saying OP should break up. It's just what I personally consider. Traditionally, the only one who wears white to a wedding is the bride. I don't know how your family is about tradition, but some would see it as disrespectful. It's also traditional to let the bride shine on her special day and not show her up or wear something that draws attention to yourself. I'd say that dress fails on both fronts. Why are you allowing your girlfriend to ruin your brother's wedding? Why is she going to a wedding of people she does not like? Why are you taking her? Does your brother mean anything to you? Or is this woman the priority to you? Why did you not shut this down immediately? There are times when we have to make bold decisions, even if they are difficult. Allowing someone you are dating to instigate a division in your family is one of those times where you nail your colors to the mast. But beware, because people do not forget these actions. Therefore, unless you are not giving us the full context of the conflict here, this woman should not be at your family's wedding. Female co-worker Nina, 23 female, and I, 26 male, work at a tech company that we joined earlier this year. The onboarding was remote, and none of us has met anyone on the team. 
We joined around the same time and were kind of buddies. We had weekly one-on-ones where we would have a reading list, discuss new things we learned relevant to work, and chat about random stuff as friends. These meetings were very helpful for me early on because it was a great way to ramp up knowledge and fun, and I felt like we had a good connection, not romantic whatsoever. Fast forward a few months, she cancels a few of our meetings because of her having personal issues. Our work also happened to not really overlap, so we had barely any direct contact for about a month, which I found weird. So I asked her again whether or not she'd like to continue doing the one-on-ones, maybe on a less frequent basis. Still, she said she'd rather cancel them because she's trying to reduce the number of social meetings she has to not feel drained. This message definitely hurt a bit since it clearly made no sense. I was considering asking if I did something wrong or if there was any other reason but did not want to escalate anything. It's totally her right to not want any extra meetings without explaining herself. Yesterday, our work streams happened to overlap. We needed to communicate some key details, and we were cordial and polite. Later, we had a team meeting, and I talked more in depth about our work and mentioned that she had helped with it. After, my boss Steve messaged me if I would be free for an impromptu call, and we hopped on Zoom. He explained to me that in no way am I in trouble or being disciplined, but that Nina shared with him a few weeks ago that I did something that made her feel uncomfortable and that apparently she is still uncomfortable. The problem is that I don't know what it is. He explains on a high level that it had to do with harassment. It wasn't specifically something I said, but the tone or laugh or reaction to something someone else said. He understands that it was certainly a miscommunication and knows that I wouldn't even joke about something like that, especially at work with a female coworker. Not that it should make a difference. It has been months since the incident, As far as I can remember, there was nothing even remotely provocative that I can remember being said to which I could have reacted. Part of me is angry at how this was handled since if it was brought up at the moment, I would have no problem apologizing or clarifying the situation. Furthermore, these months of awkwardness and uncomfortableness, which I was sensing but was not even aware of, could have been avoided. We have a call scheduled for Monday between me, her, and my boss just so I can adequately hear out her side of things, apologize, and understand what to watch out for next time. Here's where the advice comes in. I understand that I need to own up to whatever was done on the immediate level and unconditionally apologize to make amends. But on the other hand, my trust is 100% broken and I do not see how I can continue working with her, being afraid that any slight wrong action will be a second strike. Even though I don't know what exact miscommunication triggered her, I am certain that it wasn't something that should offend someone for months and require escalation to management. Furthermore, I am multiple times more productive than her, and part of me wonders if this is coming from jealousy, conscious or unconscious, that will only worsen. If it didn't go away after all this time, is there any chance it will get better? Finally, is there any way to continue working for this team Or would my best course of action be to ask for a transfer to a new team for a fresh start? Don't apologize for something you didn't do. If you have to communicate, do it through email only or with witnesses. Right now, you're thinking like a very kind person trying to fix something wrong in a relationship. But unfortunately, the corporate world will not reward that. There is no more relationship, so you need to protect yourself. You may be viewed negatively by management, and be the first to be laid off or the last to be given an opportunity. I think you should wait for this meeting with the three of you to find out what you're even being accused of. I really don't think you should be committing to own up to this mystery offense before you know what's going on. Whatever it may be, I consider requesting that transfer as quickly as possible. But I agree, this will make it weird working with this person regardless of what happens in the meeting. Get a transfer now I had a girl like this on my team, kept saying that she felt uncomfortable working with me. I didn't let it go and took it all the way to the top, ended with her admitting that she couldn't keep up and that it was unfair for me to expect her to keep with deadlines because she was stressed and felt emotionally drained. The biggest issue here isn't her discomfort or whether or not it was warranted. The issue here is that instead of her following proper conflict resolution steps 
and actually addressing any perceived issue with you first. She immediately ran to tattle to your boss like a toddler. This has created a hostile working environment in which you can now never be comfortable working with her. Harassment accusations can ruin both your professional and personal life, even when completely unfounded and unproven. Let them know that one of you will need to be transferred. Me, 20 female, and my sister, 35, don't have a great relationship. We lived together in my family home until she moved out a few years ago with her husband. She was toxic and controlling throughout my entire childhood. Since I was little, I resented her and skipped any opportunity to get closer to her. However, since she moved out, things got a little bit better. I was able to find some common ground with her, and that is her kids. Even though I don't like her, I love her kids. I have been babysitting my older nephew ever since he was a baby. Whenever my sister had to run some errands or had any type of event, I would babysit him. The thing is, sometimes she would call me to babysit him for some really useless errands, and I started to feel like she was being selfish. However, I didn't know how to set boundaries and say no, so I would babysit him regardless, even when I didn't feel up to it. Side note, I am on the spectrum, and I have sensory issues, so being around kids for a long time stresses me out, especially if they are loud. Things escalated from here, and sometimes I babysat him three to four days a week. During the pandemic, they moved back in for three weeks because they were renovating their apartment. During those three weeks, I babysat my older nephew from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day because my sister was pregnant with my younger nephew. I felt like she could use my help even though those three weeks really drained me. Well, fast forward to this year. She told me that she wants me to babysit her baby for a month, two to four hours every day. Her maternity leave is ending and she got a job offer, so she can't be at home anymore with the kids. When she asked me this, I instantly felt angry and said absolutely not. I went off and said how I want to have my own life. I have a boyfriend. I need to study. And I am also planning on finding a job. And on top of that, I don't need an excuse. I just don't want to be around a baby every day. She somehow backed off, but ever since she asked me, she's been guilt tripping me, saying how she would need to pass on the job offer if she doesn't figure something out. I honestly think it's her own fault that she needs to find a babysitter. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. OP, they chose to have another baby, not you. And I honestly feel like they think they can take advantage of you because you are family and caved before. I'm glad you were able to stand up to them and stand up for yourself. They need to adapt to being parents, including hiring a willing babysitter or not taking that job offer. Not the idiot. Not your circus, not your monkeys. You're a 20-year-old with her own life, expected to do draining work without pay? Balls to that. If she wants to pay you, Maybe consider it if you want the money, but in refusing to be their slave, you're not doing a single thing wrong. Good for you for standing up for yourself and setting boundaries. Sounds like college is working wonders for you. You're a saint for what you've done for her. Has she ever thanked you? It's not unreasonable for her to have paid you, to be honest, because it sounds like you co-parented your older nephew. Honey, you have the right to your own life. It's her responsibility to figure out a solution and not take advantage of you.